Hello, I'm Johnny and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I'd share with you my process of sculpting a hand. I've uh, done this one about half an hour ago. As you can tell it's not a human hand. I'm making it for one of my art dolls here. Well, I'll get this zoom thing out again. Uh, it's for one of my art dolls. Uh, it's one of its hands. So, to make the armature, I use this wire. I think that's 18 gauge. But get the wire where you can bend it. Because if you don't, it's extremely hard. Um, and I cut it to the size I want. And then I cover it with just tin foil. I just get the cheap tin foil. And then I wrap it in masking tape. And then it turns out like this. I'm just wearing a bit. Turns out like this. And I put a hole in it. That's where that's so I can put a ball joint to attach it to my art doll. And this little section here is for so I can slot it into the hand. And everything's secure. So this is the clay I use. It's my favourite. Super Sculpey. And you get it in these packets. It's a one pound bar. But I don't like these plastic packets. We used to get it in these boxes. I absolutely love these boxes. So what I do is. I take it out the wrapping. And just store it in these. It's got like um. I think it's lined with wax and I just keep it in here so much better than these horrible plastic things I'll just show you how I condition the clay I find it very therapeutic firstly a uh, chop a piece of that up roll it in a ball and then I just scrunch it in my hands like this. Very therapeutic as I say. And then when I feel it's like squishy enough to work with. I'll roll it out like a sausage. And then fold it over again. And I'll do a few more times like this. And then when I feel like I can work on it, I roll it into a ball. Like that. Squash it. And use my rolling pin a few times. Might squish it again if I think it's not, um, what's the word, pliable. Roll it. Squish it. Yeah. And it's alright to work with now. I just thought I'd show you this quickly. I bought this off Amazon. It's a texture maker. Anyway, I think it's amazing. Look at that. Use it for cobblestones, alien flesh, alien bark on a tree. I think it's brilliant. It's, this is like a stick, it's being carved. So, as I say, I've just made this one and I'm going to pop it in the oven now while I'm showing you how. I make me others. So I just put you on pause so I could condition the rest of this clear and I'll just show you some of my tools. I mean I don't use all of them but I've had these for a few years I just collect them and I choose my favourite ones and I love this um, rack as well. I think I got it off eBay as a man who makes them. And these over here. 
but my favourite ones I love using, well, obviously this and the rolling pin. Um, let's see, craft knife. Um, these shapers, colour shapers, they use them in painting, pushing paint around. This is like a chisel tip one, and at the end, it's got a ball stylus. That's handy for just show you for making textures, or oh, if you're making an eyeball, a small eyeball. Well, they're very handy anyway. Um, this is another one. I don't know what shape that is. That's the same. And this is my favourite one out of all of them. It's like a... I don't know what shape you call this. A poker. <laughs> but that's my absolute favourite. Um, there's another one. Oh yes. I like these with a... It's like a paddle shape. You can use these for making texture, making fingernails and on here, I don't know if you can see, you can use this as a texture as well if you're making like a robot or like something steampunk and then I'll show you. Wait, I'll just can't see properly through the camera. There, I don't know if you can see it. Try it on a flat piece, might be better. Uh, still don't know if you can see it. But the texture it makes, it's like as if um, it's almost like on metal. Um, that's just a dowel. <clears throat> you can use that for making shapes. I like a little rolling pin. Um, the poker tool, that's very good. And I've got this uh, other one, where have I put it? Yeah, I love this. That's like um, what you'd use in knitting. I absolutely love this. Because when you're like working between fingers and the clay, you can do this to smooth the clay so there's no hard edges. Anywhere else? Oh yes, and these were the ball stylus both ends, uh, the largest one, I think it's like that. How many would you say, an inch, an inch and a half? Very handy these. Can be used like, as I say, making textures, but they also like it when I'm um, sculpting faces or even in between fingers. You can rub down the hard edges. Um, oh yes, and these are sponges, sea sponges, that can also be good for texture. Well, look at that. It's called me a liar, it's dropping to bits. There, I don't know if you can see that. It makes uh, the texture on it almost like human skin. But I mean, this one's dropping to bits, so. Yes. And this is like a scratching tool. I don't use this very often, it leaves such a mess. Anyway, let's get cracking. I'm sure I've bored you enough already. I won't be talking right the way through this, so. Feel free to play your own music. So I roll it out. Put it along here so it's more rectangle. Cut 
the scruffy edges are. And then I use this to go around the armature. This is the arm. I mean, this is just my process. Other people will do it different. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but this works for me. But make sure when you're putting this on, because I have put like an excess on it just to shape it, and I'll grab the excess off like around here. But make sure there's no air bubbles in, because it'll cause, when it goes in the oven, it'll crack. So that's not very good, is it? If I sound out of breath, it's because the oven's on. I'm sitting in the kitchen, the oven's on. And I've uh, left the window closed because the neighbours are quite noisy. And I'm absolutely sweating. Might just pass out. It doesn't really matter about uh, this helping or having any clay on because I'm going to insert that into the wrist when I do with the hand. As I say, this is just my process and it might look um, really messy to you. So I'll put you on pause then because I couldn't find the hole. So I've used this bit of um, string. There's the hole for the joint. I've used this bit of string so I won't lose it again. And the arm is complete. So I'll start the hand now. Put that to one side. So it's in a circle, a sphere, and squash it down like so. And that's the palm of the hand. Now we'll do it all different, but I'll just try this way. See, there's the fingers. Now, this is fiddly. I've watched a um, few tutorials on this and they go this is how you do it and twist it round here and twist it round there and then they skip it so and when it comes back it's like a perfect hand but I'll show you how fiddly it is. Yeah so yeah you twist it round and you twist it, just play with it really, muck around with it. And as you can see, the fingers are far too long, but I'll show you what I do to solve that problem. Unless you want um, spaghetti fingers like that. So, I mean, sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll look at it and think, oh, what a mess. And, Scrumple it up and start again. But, and carry on. Carry on doing it and then after 15 minutes if it still looks a mess then scrumple it up. So I give her another piece. Do it into a ball. I mean you might think it's awkward and daft the way I do it but works for me. Mostly it does. <laughs> I just attach this here. So that's like the other part of the hand. The other part. It is the hand, this part. Right. So as you can see, 
spaghetti fingers. So what I do is I, which one should I use as the thumb? I forgot how many fingers. I think four fingers and a thumb. Yeah, I use for the other one. Um, right. So then I'll squish it down. Squish it down like so. Let's squish this down. Squish this one down. Well, I don't even think it's going to match the other hand that I've done. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I've got loads to make. Squish this down. I mean, sometimes what I do when the fingers are really long, I'll just just say the just say this is part of the finger. I'll just chop it like that. But then you might be end up with like a really skinny finger. Right. So as you can see, they're not perfect yet. Well, not that anything I do is perfect, but they're not perfect. But you keep on fiddling around with them like this. And then they'll turn into a shape that you like. Now, there we go. That's what I've got so far. So what I'll do is I'll put you on pause and then I'll keep messing around with them. So as you can see with this one, I've been fiddling around with it and it's, this has got really long and I don't feel like I can squash it down any further because, I mean, look at the shape of the hand. And I've used, I used one of the fingers for the thumb, so it's only got three fingers. So this is what I do with this. I just slice the tip of it off like so and then just do this. Mess around with it again. And as you can see, it's sort of finger shaped. I quite like the shape of that hand. As I say, I've got uh, loads of art dolls to make, so I'm sure when I make another hand, it'll be like similar to this. So what I did here, I just rolled, rolled here because there was like uneven gaps, it didn't look natural. Doing the same with this, and I could also use me oh, favourite. Should have been more prepared and told you, done some research so I could tell you what. This is called, but maybe in another video, the, so I'll put this down here, put it there, sort of shape it a bit more. So it's not too long. Like so. And for the thumb here, get a bit of um, clear. See, there's no exact measurements. It's up, for, up to you to decide. But what I'm trying to do is see this uh, spongy bit, this bit of the thumb. I'm trying to make that out of clear. Right. And I'll just put it here where the thumb is. Is that the palm where I want here? Yeah. Just put it here. I mean, I think I've made it a bit too big, but...
And I mean, if it bothers you, all the way you can see where the tool marks has been, if you can't get them out, you can use alcohol, um, not gin. Um, okay, I'll just pause this and show you. There, you can use this. I've had this for a year now, and as you can see, I haven't used much of it. And you just you put it in a, a small container, like a medicine pot, and then use a, um, what do you call them, a Q-tip. Dip it in, and then just, or even a brush, but make sure it's a brush that you're doing, not one of your best brushes. And then you just go like this with the Q-tip or with your brush. And it will take all the tool marks out, but don't use too much because when I first tried it, I used too much and it it just dissolved all of the stuff that I'd worked. So all I had to do, and it went all flat and squishy, ruined it. So, I don't know what you think about this, but I quite like it. I mean, it's not meant to look like a human hand. It's for a rat. I think I might make a space rat. There, so I'll show you how I do the nails now. See, not very prepared at all. One of these got a really nice tip to it. Um, found it. It's like a little paddle thing. I mean, normally if I'm making bigger hands, I'll get um, I'll get this, and I'll just show you. Just pretend this is like on a hand. Right, pretend that's a finger. So I'll get this, cut it here. I think it's all blurry, I don't think you can see that. Cut it here. Well, I can't particularly see it very good through the camera. And here. Just go over here faint. And then where you've done the top of the nail, Push it forward a bit and then oh it looks like my fingernail well bitten and if you can if you can see that the keeps on going out of focus I'm gonna have to invest in a decent camera anyway can you see it from the side There we go. So, with this one, because it's small, I'll do this. I'll push this in, I'll put it in deep here and then along. And there, it makes like a shape of a nail, I guess. Not an expertly done one. In and down again. In and down again, but I mean it's like a rat's hand. So this is the thumb. So as your hand sits, just pull it back here. Out as your hand sits like that. So let's see. There's your fingernails here, and this your thumb. So you do the fingernail there, here, on the side. I mean, I've done the mistake before and done it there. Right, so, oh, it's the wrong paddle bit. Down. By right, that should be thicker, but never mind. So then I'll go with my craft knife. Shall I zoom in again? In with my craft knife, and then I'll go cut the top like that, like that, 
and flick the nail up a bit so it's like a realistic focus sorry about that's not very good but hopefully you'll get the gist of what i mean i'll just take my glasses off and see there's that I cut at the top flick it a bit up at the top flick it and here's the thumb cut the top flick it there now I won't go right the way around I think that looks fine thought I'd done it wrong then <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, so I'll end this video now because it's like nearly 27 minutes long. I'm sure I've sent you to sleep already. So I think I'll have to do this in two parts. Thank you for watching. See you bye.